coming to you from sunny Orlando, Florida. Welcome to the Paper Stack Podcast, where we cover current topics in the note industry, give you tactics for your note business, and talk with industry leaders to make you a better note investor. And now, your hosts, Brett Berkey and Rick Allen. Welcome back to the Paper Stack Podcast. We are doing another podcast with Chris Seventy. I think this actually makes it is this his third time being on here? I think it's like fourth time. Fourth time? I think you're the most visited interview on this podcast. The last time we tried to do this series... I oh, maybe that's what it was. It was such a cluster uh, that... We, it, we went out and bought new microphones because of it. Yeah. We, because, we <laughs> failed a few times. <laughs> yeah. I'm glad I don't have that influence over you guys. With no. <laughs> I'm glad you're, you're, you have some extra time to talk to us. We talked in pre-roll of the last of or our last podcast. You were talking about you were fired up because of an attorney that, and they all get us fired up. But it was because you were trying to go the route of a judgment. What were you doing? Tell me. Talk to us about it. Explain it. Okay, so a little advanced strategy in note investing that share with people, and this can be extremely lucrative if you can find the right deals. And we were talking about. Back in the day, there used to be sellers who literally just would give stuff away, like hundred bucks or a thousand bucks alone. And some of these assets would have a hundred thousand dollar tax balances, they're crack houses. And it was an investor who owned the property and had multiple other properties, but he did a strategic default. And I bought a loan, it was included in the package. And I was telling my attorney about this, and he chuckled and he goes, well, You know what you need to do? And I'm like, Nope, no, I don't is why bother for closing and spending, and this was in Illinois, this for one of the first ones, why, why spending like $8,000 to foreclose, just, just get a judgment and slap it on another property. And I'm like, wait a second, hit the rewind button, rewind and play that at 0.5 speed so I understand what you're saying. And he's, you realize you don't have to go after the specific property that the note is on. Yeah, I thought you did. And he's like, no, he's like, you have a note where, and I'm just going to use, pick on Brett today. Now I give Brett a note for a hundred thousand dollars. That mortgage is connected to that property as collateral, but instead of going to spend all that money in foreclosure is you can just get a, a judgment against Brett and then record it in counties. He has properties and it will attach to those properties as well. And it's like mind blown when that happens. We did, I did that. I've done this on several occasions. And why I was fired up today is I have a property that was a crack house that we had the loan on. And we didn't know this, of course, at the time, but it was a throw in, you know, deal. And the property has been sold at tax sale. The deed's gone. It's wiped. And we basically have the judgment. So now we're going, now we're going next level advanced step on this one. Whoa, whoa, um, whoa. We have the Did judgment. Did you get the judgment okay. before it sold at tax sale or after? After. So it sold at tax sale. You bought the note, mm -hmm. got judgment or did you buy the note after the tax sale or you just let it go to tax sale? Uh, it was, well, no, it was in between. Yeah. I let it go to tax sale. I knew I wasn't going to foreclose on the property because I, it, the taxes were more than what the property is worth. Plus, it was squatters in there dealing drugs. Don't so want that if I, I'm going to just go yes. get a judgment against the person. Yes. Oh, my gosh. So the guy actually agreed to the judgment. So he signed a confession of judgment. He owed me $50,000. And as part, he's, I'll cut you a check for $15,000. And then I'll pay 1000 bucks a month for the rest. Cool. Cuts us a check for fifteen grand profit. And then he stopped paying us now on that thousand dollars. So we have a judgment. The house is gone. So now it's okay. Now what do I do with this judgment? Because it's in his name and he sold his primary residence and it had his wife on it. So I couldn't attach it to that piece of property, which talk to your attorney about that, what you can attach it to what you can't. So my attorney that I'm working with on this is hell bent on the, pro the crack house that sold at tax sale and asking all the questions about that. And I'm like, I, let me be clear. I do not care about the crack house. Pretend that the mortgage is gone, doesn't exist. I don't care. I have a judgment. And my attorney that I use most of the time, then he's, so I of course ask him, okay, now what do we do? He goes, oh, 
goes, now you basically power up Super Mario from eating the mushroom to like getting the fire, the fire, shooting flames. He goes, you get what's called a charging order. I go, what the hell is a charging order? He goes, essentially, it's an order that allows you to step in to his LLCs and get an equitable interest in his companies that he owns. So I'm like, hold on, time out. So let me just understand this. So if Brett Berkey, who owes me 35000 owns Brett Berkey Real Estate and has 50 rentals in that LLC, you're now telling me, depending on the state, which this state you can, I can file something with the court that says, Mr. Berkey owes me 35 grand. He owns his ad. One of his assets is an LLC. I can then basically attach an equitable interest in that LLC and then step in and have some ownership in that LLC to pick and choose an asset to sell like a bank, like a bankruptcy trustee. And he's like, essentially, yes, without, with 10,000 other legal things he threw in there. So I'm like, wow. I'm like, this is insane. So my attorney is arguing with me about, well, maybe that's not the best way to go. And I'm like, okay, tell me what is the best way to go. And they keep going back to the crack house. I'm like, the crack house is gone. Focus. And I'm the one who's usually a squirrel running around in 27 directions. I'm like, just focus on the judgment. Yeah. So that's one of the things that had got me fired up today is we've been going back and forth for several weeks on how to approach this. And I'm just like, here's what one attorney is telling me. And it's always good to get multiple opinions from attorneys. But if there's another way, and this is where I say it comes back to also understanding, I'm not telling the attorney what to do. I'm saying, here's, I believe this is an option. Tell me if this is right or wrong. Tell me if this is what would happen. But if you have another solution, hey, I'm all years. I don't care how I get the money. I just want to get it as fast as possible. And so... One, it seems like if you're if you know this strategy and you're looking at tapes with that, and it's not it's it's probably not one you're doing every single time, but it's a it's just yeah. a it's an exit strategy. It's a tool in the tool belt, right? That mm -hmm. opens up some stuff that you can bid on. That if people don't know this strategy, and it's as simple as going in the prop stream. If you have a prop stream account, looking up the property, there's a tab that says linked properties. It, Boom, there you go. That's crazy. That is insane. So can you, do you, so like for the, let's say in the hypothetical scenario, I owe you 35,000. So you can only collect up to that 35,000, right? But you could sell whatever assets I own to get what so yes. you. Yes, correct. Right. Yeah. Now you do have to be careful. Like in Florida, you can't attach it, I think, to primary residence because of homestead exemptions. And there's many different things you got to be wary of, but it's, an ex excellent tool to consider when you're looking at certain assets or certain tapes where you see some of this stuff, where it also can be pretty powerful is on the second space. Because if you're underwater on the mortgage and basically, hey, the first is in foreclosure with a million dollar balance when it's a property that's only worth 750 grand and you have a hundred thousand dollar second. Yeah, I'll give you a penny on the dollar for that hundred thousand and I'll give you a hundred or a thousand bucks for that realizing we're looking at one right now where it's a second the borrower owes about $75,000 and they literally just closed on a $1.7 million property with no mortgage on it. Oh, you're going to, you're going to make them so mad. <laughs> oh God. And so you can get the judgment you can attach it to that property. And then what do you wait for them to sell it? Or can you foreclose on it? Oh, no. Your... oh no, this is, and again, this is next level stuff. And this happened on one of these deals that I did is because you have a non-performing judgment, you can force the sale of that property. And we did that on a borrower who, again, this borrower, and I want to refrain, say something. We don't do this to like, the normal guy who doesn't may have a rental and doesn't have and has 100% equity in another property. This is the people who are strategically doing this with significant capital that they can pay. This isn't we're going after some 87 year old homeowner, like we're just trying to rat. I want to be clear, we're not trying to. Yeah. But so in this instance, one of these instances, this guy had multi dozens of properties and didn't pay. So we slapped the judgment on his primary residence. 
and he re didn't respond or when you slap it on the primary, all you have to do is record it in the county and it's automatically attached. So we did that. He didn't respond. So we had the attorney start that foreclosure process and file the complaint. So when they filed the complaint and go serve him at the property, the wife answered the door and served the husband. And the attorney told me the process servicer who they use said it was the funniest things he's ever seen because the wife was apoplectic because she had no clue what was going on. And she, I, man, that guy must've been sleeping on the couch or somewhere for the next month. But I can tell you about two weeks later, we get a, we got a check full payoff. That's crazy. Let me ask you a question. So let's say that back to the hypothetical situation, like Rick's also on the LOC, and, but he's yep. not invested in say whatever I owned, but we're both yep. in the LLC. Are you still allowed to slap the, the Yeah, that, that's where it gets hairy. And for example, on one of ours, it was on him, but him and his wife on the property, the judgment sticks, but you can't collect on it unless she passed away and he's the sole owner. I've got one right now. This was a borrower. Here, here's a crazy one. Pennsylvania, borrower on the loan. House was basically ransacked. They were collecting money. They owned the house and the house next door. They were taking photos of the house, sending it to Section 8, saying, here's our house, created a false renter. This house couldn't, no, you couldn't live in, didn't have walls or anything. They were collecting money from the state, okay? Saying it was rented, taking pictures of the house next door. Weren't paying us. We foreclose. We actually, had, we actually reached a settlement with this guy. They took a train an hour to our attorney's office, got to the office and said, we want to renegotiate the deal. And the attorney laughed at them. They walked away and never paid. It was in his name. They own nine other properties that now we have, we got a judgment on, we put them on those other properties. But because the houses are in their names and judgments in his, we can't collect on it. But the good thing in this case is he's 50 years old, but his wife is 75. And the judgments are good for 10, 12 years and you can renew them for like perpetuity. I'm betting odds that basically she, her lifespan is probably shorter than his. And then, but it's a judgment that's just sitting there collecting 12% interest over time that I have three, it's a $50,000 judgment collecting 12% that I have four grand into the deal. So it's not that service. You can just have the judgment sitting there. It's literally just sitting there. And my attorney, I have a note in my calendar that in 2030 to renew it. And every year we do a skip trace to see if they're still alive. Wow. Look at that. That's crazy. And that's 12% per year. Yeah. Compounding. Yep. Compounding. That's crazy. That's, that's gonna, crazy. That's going to jump quick. <laughs> I would imagine he, he comes to come some type of, he's, he's got to, unless he you know, can see the future. He's got to, that's just such a looming thing over your head. Knowing that it's there and it's just. They don't care. There. These people do not, not care. care. Really? Yep. yep. Wow. Nope. nope. So these are the people that are I, trying to cheat the system and he just threw it right back in their face. Yeah. I, we got another one in Florida that the borrower, and here's another one too. This was a second that was bought from a company out of Pennsylvania. We all know this person who sells a lot of seconds that it was a hundred thousand dollar lien second underwater sold it for 2,500 bucks because it was vacant land and it was like a second on vacant land, which I didn't even, who the heck would give a second on vacant? It was crazy. But the land was part of a subdivision that this person owned every single lot in the subdivision and had been selling them off for 40 grand a pop. They still have nine lots in that subdivision as we speak. We actually, we did foreclose on the, on it and actually did get, it was weird because the second had more money was greater than the first. So she was like paying the first. So we foreclosed from second. We ended up getting some money from it actually. And then the balance now we're attaching to those other lots and getting ready to push those other lots to force the sale of those other lots to get our money. That's insane. So you're going to collect off a, what you say, $2,500 $2, investment? 2500 And you're going to collect yeah. all, you're going after all 100 And the lots are worth, they were selling for 40, 50 grand. So there's a half million dollars in money sitting there. Yeah. And we've had the attorney reach out and just say, just go sell a lot. 
if you give, cut me a check today for 50 grand, we'll go away. No, I'm good. What happens if you get that judgment and then they file bankruptcy? Because they have the assets, it will probably, it's unsecured, but we could contest the bankruptcy if it was a chapter seven, we would contest it. And chapter 13 is just a restructured debt, which there's enough money to pay all of the, I'm assuming there's enough, but they could potentially, and then we might only get pennies on the dollar. But so that is, that is a risk. But a lot of these, when the ones that we see, they've got multiple properties and rentals that are cash flowing that they have low mortgages on. So they're not going to want to, a lot of them are real estate investors. A real estate investor files bankruptcy. He's done investing for a while. If it was a million dollar judgment, yes. A lot of these are 50 grand. It's not, he'd be stupid to file bankruptcy. If you get the judgment on the person, does the mm -hmm. mortgage stay intact? So you have the option to go back if you filed foreclosure, then to file, or he filed bankruptcy, you could go back after the mortgage or is it like a double yeah, jeopardy sure. thing or how's well, that work? No, if, if you didn't foreclose on the asset, you're still connected to that property. So you're still a secured creditor on that one asset because you haven't collected anything. You're just cross collateralizing your note with other assets because you believe that one asset. Now, if that asset already has equity in it, you don't need to go through all this process. Where it comes in handy is those properties. And there's a company today that sells low value properties that may have significant tax balances on them. Now, if, the, if one of those was an investor property and they have five other properties, this is where that comes into play. Yeah. Wow, that's great. That's pretty cool. That's good stuff. It's like a whole new set of eyes. It's like a whole new... Yeah, like he just said, like my... I, I'm not going to stop thinking about that throughout the, it's good. It's the yeah. weekend because Saturday and Sunday, I'm going to be sitting there thinking about it. And it's my wife. Just don't go back and, and look like, at which loans you stole that you want to kick yourself in the ass for now. That's what you don't oh, want to do. I, it's, that's, that's already <laughs> happened. And I'm actually already going through what, what loans we have left in the portfolio, looking at those going, there's potential for some of these things. Yeah. There's definitely, there's one right now that I look at the one in, in Louisville, Kentucky that, it would have been, this guy had so many assets and he kept filing bankruptcies. Oh, that one. Yeah, yeah that was terrible. But Chris, thank you. Appreciate it, man. That's, you've oh. blown my mind today. You can never stop learning. And that's the, the key is you never stop learning. Yeah, and I came out with this when people joke because my attorney laughs at me because I'll ask him 10 questions and nine of them he'll tell me you can't do. But the one he tells me you could do that is like mind blowing. It's, wow, I did not know you could do that. No, I just, I want my attorney, like the, the, what I consider the best of the attorneys is saying, this is what I want to do. How do I do it? Yep. But usually it doesn't work like that. They don't tell you the way to do it. They tell you, no, you can't do that. No, you can't do that. No, you can't do that. Oh yes, you could do that though. So you have to actually do the thinking. Well, and this is where selecting your attorney is so extremely important because there's a lot of very large firms who they're foreclosure mills. And what they do is they just process foreclosures. They're good at it, but they, they're like, think of like the Ford manufacturing plant. Basically, they just do the same thing over and over. If you want something done differently, like you can't customize your car in the plant, but you got to do that. That's not their game or gig. You need a smaller attorney who can think outside the box. And it's usually the ones that are like one, two, three person firms that have seen some of this crazy stuff. And they actually like it. When you start bringing this stuff up to them, they actually get excited with a lot of this stuff because they're so used to the bread and butter stuff. Doing something different for them, they find is a challenge. Yeah, definitely. That's cool. Definitely. Chris, thank you. I appreciate it, man. Thank you for sharing your knowledge today. That was, that was I'm good. excited, man. I'm excited. Good. Love it. I know the user, this one I'm predicting will be highly ranked. Yeah. In our right. content. That's a, yeah. Enjoy coming on, talking to you guys. Always good talk shop. So yeah, man. So what's your next? Uh, any events you got coming up? Where, where are we going to see you again? Well, he's going to be at Wealth yeah, Wall be, Street. Yeah, I'll be at Wealth Wall Street in August. So I'll see you there in Nashville, and then a few weeks later I'll be out in uh, is it Dana Point, IMN. I think yeah, we're going out there because my entire team's out in California. So I'll spend a week out there where before the event we we have a corporate event together and hang out together, and then then head down to IMN. So is that it for the year? We'd be in Dallas for Node Expo or 
Yeah, I'm thinking of going to Node Expo. I typically haven't gone in the past just because of timing, but I'm thinking heading out that head in this year to a note expo. Perfect. Yeah, we'll be there. We'll, if you haven't seen noteclosings.com, remind us to get you a little demo and show you how that's working, which is pretty cool. Yep. Um, yeah, I got the uh, emails uh, that's open. So awesome. Yeah, so, good stuff, man. Hey, thank you. It's lunchtime. Go get some lunch. I appreciate it. We'll, uh, we'll catch you on the next one. Sounds yeah. good. Thanks, guys. See yeah. Are you new to the mortgage note industry? Have you been wanting to learn the step-by-step -step process to purchase your first mortgage note? Well, you're in luck. We've convinced our CEO, Rick Allen, to break down everything he knows about mortgage note investing. Through a series of 50 videos, you'll get everything from start to finish of where to purchase notes, how to purchase notes, and all of Rick's investing techniques he has developed over the many years. From performing note tactics to non-performing notes, Rick gives you everything he knows about investing. Bonuses include our glossary of industry terms, Rick's own proprietary calculators he created to evaluate notes, discounts from our partners, our Rolodex of vendors, a private Facebook group, along with a lot more. We've packed so much content into the Academy to take you from beginner to expert in no time. To learn more about the Academy, go to academy.paperstack.com slash welcome. Again, that is academy.paperstack.com slash welcome.